Hey, are you interested in becoming a hardware engineer, but you're feeling overwhelmed by the learning path? See, I was in your shoes too. I was spending years learning the ropes and feeling anxious about my hardware and PCB designs. Some I got wrong, actually. I made mistakes. Um, but after enough years, after about six to eight years, I developed a framework that helped me become a confident and complete hardware engineer. And I've been able to use this framework to help others accomplish what it took me six years. Now it takes them six months. And I'm here to share that framework with you. Okay, so let's talk about the problem. The traditional approach to learning hardware and PCB design involves a lot of trial and error. You know, they don't really teach this stuff in university or schools. All right, I teach it at Rochester Institute of Technology. Others, there, there are a couple of pockets like where Dr. Bogatin teaches the principles of signal integrity to PCB design and EMI at his university. But in large part, universities don't teach this stuff. Okay, you might take online courses or learn from other engineers, but this can leave you feeling like a copy paste engineer who can only follow existing designs that the real engine, I don't want to say real engineers, but you know, the true designers could design from scratch. You might also be worried about your designs not working or causing problems, even if you do get a project or design finished. Okay. I'm not talking about uh, engineers checking your boards. Everybody has to go through that, but you don't want to make you may be afraid of making some silly mistake that's going to cause a company or your customer money. I've done that before, okay? I've had my customers spend a couple hundred dollars on boards that I was sure were going to work fine, but some footprints were wrong. Like, just, just two footprints. One could be fixed, one could not. All right? And that was, like, one of the most painful, like, embarrassing things I had experienced in a long time. Okay. In fact, I almost wanted to give up on PCB design and I actually did for about six months. Fortunately, the, you know, the company still worked with me, but not on PCB layout. It was on modifying things in the software tool I was using ORCAD at the time. Okay. After enough time going through that and dealing with that pain, I came to realize you know, and, and actually getting good, you know, not making those silly mistakes. I actually came to realize that there is a framework, there's a set of frameworks and principles you can use to fix this problem. Okay. So here's the framework. My framework is called the mesh method. I call it the mesh method. And it focuses on understanding the underlying physics that govern hardware design, the physical problems like in in the real world that cause the issues you need to overcome through what we call design. Okay. And it breaks down into four key domains. There are more domains, but there is, these are the four key ones that capture 90% of problems you're going to run into. It's the mechanics. All right. This covers things like component spacing and material properties. Then there's electromagnetism, which is the E in the mesh method. This deals with signal integrity, electromagnetic compatibility, and electrostatic discharge. You need to know that. You have your signal integrity as well. The focus there are specific signal integrity issues you'd have to deal with. And this focuses on your um, electromagnetic phenomena that cause signal integrity issues. Then there's the time domain. And the solution to that is high-speed digital design, hence the H and the MASH method. So we have mechanical problems, electromagnetic problems, signal integrity problems, and time problems that need high-speed digital design. This ensures components communicate effectively when you can design for high speed. This is so that your components have the right timing and have data synchronized with each other. All right. So using this approach and building practical boards and PCBs is the way to get you to actually know what you're doing as a designer who doesn't just use rules of thumb. Getting you from a copy paste engineer to becoming a true confident PCB expert 
PCB designer, okay? Expert hardware engineer. So if you understand these domains and their corresponding solutions, like designing for excellence, designing for manufacturability, high-speed digital design, signal integrity, you'll be able to approach any design with confidence. You'll understand how to solve any problem that arises, and you'll continuously learn and integrate new information. So now with this foundation, any new designs you come across, any new courses you take, any article or material you read, you'll know from a principled and foundation perspective whether that information applies to your case or if it does not. That's the true sign and the true proof that you are an expert, that you're, I would dare say, master at your field. Okay. So if you're ready to ditch the anxiety and, uh, you know, the, the self-doubts, and you're ready to jump into being a complete hardware engineer in a shorter time frame than six to eight years, like I did, then in, your, in the Elite Hardware Engineer Accelerator program, you can do that. It goes deeper into the MASH method and it provides the tools and support you need to succeed, okay? Let me show you a little bit of the back end just so you see what I'm talking about. So here's the curriculum where you will learn the foundations of PCB design. You watch these videos first. We have a complete checklist, the complete program checklist. All right. We have then some reading material and your first project that you would work on just to get your self acclimated with the software, used to the software. You're not gonna remember anything from this module. The next project is where we get into design for excellence, design for manufacturing. And I show you step-by-step, step, little by little. It's not me just showing you what buttons to click in a PCP software. This is a practical application, yes. But it's me telling you and explaining exactly why you make every single little design decision. This is the minimum requirement companies are looking for. When they say DFX in the job description, they mean all of this stuff. All right. We talk about return paths, mixed signal PCB design, design sync, how you would do your initial component, compl your component placement, right? Showing you step by step each decision, why I'm making each decision. By the time you're done with project two, you're ready. I mean, the, the information is so dense and, and well put together, you're ready to start applying for entry level constraints driven hardware PCB design roles. But it goes it goes multiple steps beyond that. That's just project two where you're job ready for entry level. That's just project two. Project three, you get an electromagnetism, you reach out to me. Once you hit that milestone, that benchmark, I give you the next project. And we focus on we focus on this domain. Project four, same thing, signal integrity essentials. There are a ton of signal integrity essentials that you need to learn and understand, but you can do it using this mesh framework. You don't have to worry about taking notes. You don't have to worry about getting something wrong or missing something. You're gonna be reintroduced to key principles you learned prior to and in prior lessons again and again anyway, all right? It's baked in and folded in in such a way you don't have to take notes, don't worry about it. And you have high-speed digital design, power integrity, then component selection, communication protocols, and your advanced project, your capstone project. And that's it. Now you have eight projects under your belt. You're more than qualified for most, for most non-senior level PCB design roles. And you're good to go. And this solves the problem for good. And you can ask questions in the discussion. Okay. This, this one is the new course as a program. This is distilled video only version of my courses. We have people in the elite or in the one-on-one um, -on -one mentorship. That's where most of them are. Okay. If you are driven to learn this stuff and you're tired of searching, then 
Enroll in the Elite Hardware Engineer Accelerator. This will guaranteed help you get to where you need to go. If it does not, I'll give you a full refund. Just make sure you do the work. Show proof that you've done the work. Okay, that's my guarantee. All right, reach out to Kirsch at Hasofu.com. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And don't miss out on more and more opportunities to live a better life, to live your dream as a PCB designer who actually knows what they're doing. I just had a discussion with a representative from a top EDA company. I'm not going to say who it is. And they talk about how people are designing based on rules of thumb, which is fine until it's not okay. They're not approaching PCB design through true design simulations, processes, principles. Those are the things that work. How we have our devices, our engineers build it through those things. That's why they work. All right. Even if you got a reference design, would you be able to know, would you know how to make it properly? I doubt it. And have it work? No way. With the right principles, absolutely. It's physics. I'll give you one more thing. How come we can trust 3D field solvers to give us the right information? But a 3D field solver has never designed a PCB design in its life. Think about that. We trust these software tools and everything to make sure our boards get done properly. All of the mistakes come from the engineers, not the software tools. They're doing it based on math and physics and the principles. But they've never designed a PCB. The mistakes are always with designers, the designer's decisions, not the tool. Imagine now you becoming the wizard, the software that can always take the certain inputs, the requirements, and always spit out the right design decisions. That's what this program is for your brain. Okay. If this is what you want and to achieve in three to four months, then you may want to consider enrolling in the program. There's nothing else like it. Okay. Until next time, I'll see you. Have a good one.